Well, let's see if a third video will uh, transfer from one, to, one source to the other, right? Why not? I don't believe in buffers. Let's talk real quick. Maybe, hopefully. Nah, it's me. So let's talk for another half hour on the concept of... And this is... I'm going to try to encapsulate this to just this concept. Because it's not necessarily part of anything else, really. But at the same time, it's... It's important to talk about. It's the Mary Sue. I'm sure you've heard the phrase. There's a, there's a feminist blog site that's named it. Which, honestly... Given the connotations of Mary Sue, I don't know why you'd ever willingly call it your your website that, unless you're just a dumbass. But uh, male version is the Gary Stew. Um, uh, there also is a, a a new term for Mary Sue circulated around called Whedon-esque, uh, because Whedon doesn't write weak women. All of his women are basically infallible and indestructible. And on its basic note, that's a Mary Sue. Uh, Mary Sue began in fan fiction. Uh, the term comes from uh, Instant Mary Sue, who was written as, depending on, on, on your source, uh, a joke, or seriously, at the beginning at least. Uh, but a lot of people were writing off author insert characters into Star Trek fanfic when fanfic was first really actually getting circulated in the early days of the internet. And, you know, it would be like, uh, the, uh, the adventures of Ensign Rose, you know, well, not Rose, but his Doctor Who connotations for me, but like Ensign Sally and OMG, Kirk wants to bang her. And Spock wants to bang her too, so they fight each other for her love. Blah. Well, Instant Mary Sue uh, starts out an incident on the Enterprise, of course, and then she ends up being half Klingon, uh, half uh, Vulcan, and then half Klingon, and then basically half of whatever race she's trying to flirt with this week, uh, to the point where it ends up getting revealed. Over the course of years, and like I said, she either was a joke making fun of other authors for doing it, or she began at that and then began serious, became ser began serious and became that later. But eventually, she became. Uh, it was real. She's half Q. <laughs> uh, and then uh, when the woman ended, when the writer ended the career of Ensign Mary Sue, uh, all of the different races basically decided to to leave their their government's in the hand of the benevolent Queen Mary Sue, and she became Queen of the Galaxy, and created uh, a universal and everlasting peace between all races. Uh, fucking wackadoo shit. But basically, modern day, a Mary, well, specific, technically a modern day what Mary Sue is a character who is infallible, indestructible, really, uh, and doesn't really drive the story at all. The character exists in the story, and the character is almost entirely, almost always the main character, but they don't really provide any impetus to the story at all, except for as a, a prop. They're a prop, but they're also there to be told how awesome or beautiful or great they are. Uh, they will occasionally get into a fight, but they can't really be hurt. Like, they might get hurt in that kind of anime way where they get, like, a bloody lip, but it's gone, and then they just win. Uh, people are arguing now that, like, Rey from Star Wars, the new Star Wars is a Mary Sue. I disagree. Uh, I think they were actually, actually, if you pay uh, close attention to the, the, the power cues, because old comic book reader, uh, as she's developing through the thing, they actually leave a lot of cues that she actually has a force ability that she develops, that, that's something she's been developing for years without knowing, essentially force sensitive. And that's where a lot of her, her Mary Sue-ness comes from in the movie. But they're not implicitly explaining it, explicitly explaining it, and so people are just, like they do about a lot of characters, throwing their hands in the air going, Mary Sue. Um, but neither here nor there, right? Except that's kind of where we are. Uh, a lot of people are basically attaching Mary Sue to any character that they don't like or that they feel wasn't characterized enough, and that's not really the case. So Mary Sue is specifically a, a specific symptom of, of, of bad writing. Uh, 
Bella from Twilight is a Mary Sue. She, as much as I don't like Twilight, this has something to do with it. Uh, yeah, it's just going nuts. Bella provides nothing really to the story. She's there to be fought over by men, and she's there to cry. But that doesn't really advance the story. She's literally waiting for things to happen to her. And is terribly, not terribly, proactive in her own existence. Anita Blake, as much as I consider her kind of a terribly written character as the series goes on, isn't a Mary Sue because she does have her own abilities. She's a little overpowered, but she does suffer setbacks and losses in the early in the early book series, as I understand. I haven't read either series, so don't don't quote me verbatim, but I've seen enough of them and I've talked with enough people who have read them, including people who enjoyed them. Uh but the idea is, is a Mary Sue character is uh, people come in to save them. People act upon them, but they never really act upon their environment. Uh, they're there to be worried about. They're there to be worried over. They're there to be told they're precious, told they're awesome, told they're cool, told they're powerful, or they're there to just beat up every bad guy and just never have anything back. Like, I'm using a lot of references from, like, romance and stuff like that, and that's a lot of romance novels use a Mary Sue. But on the end, on the other end, you can have a Mary Sue, well, it would generally be a Gary Sue, but you can have a Mary Sue character who's just a badass who no one can defeat, no one can touch. They never suffer a setback, they never suffer a loss, they're just, my God, they're just the best at everything, and everyone needs to make sure that they know, everyone knows that they're the best. Defeating someone with no risk is not an effect on the environment or the story. If there's no risk, then there's no drama. And if there's no drama, there's no story. And that's the problem ultimately with Mary Sue's is they, pro they provide no drama to the story. They provide no element to the story, but they almost invariably are the main character. And that's the problem I have. Now, granted, a lot of times you'll have a Mary Sue, uh, there are a lot of times you'll have a Mary Sue who's just someone who pops in and saves the day before they disappear. But for the most part, that occurs in like, it occurs a lot in role-playing games when you have a, an old, an old a DM who's been running for a while and wants to bring one of his player characters back in the system that he's running, that he, he really enjoyed the character. And so you'll have this character pop in, beat the shit, he'll put you in insurmountable odds that you can't stop, and all of a sudden his character will come in and just wipe the floor with the bad guys and stand around long enough to be told how cool he is before he disappears to, that, to, the, to the tune of the Lone Ranger and who, uh, who was that man in that mask. Uh... But it happens. It happens in stories. It happens in movies. Uh, the infallible, undefeatable, indefat indefatigable character is almost invariably, at least in part of Mary Sue, because there's nothing dramatic of dramatic importance about this character. You could literally improve the story by giving this character a bad day. Not related to the, like, like in uh, the case of Twilight, not related to the you know, the love interests just, you know, maybe she has really bad menstrual cramps. It's still a goddamn flaw, and it's still something that might get in her way that she has to overcome. There's nothing in that story that she has to overcome that someone else doesn't have to overcome for her. And that's true of, of generally of Mary Sue's. A Mary Sue never really has to overcome something. Now, your definition may vary, and there are a lot of people who have very, very, very definitions because it's not technically really a phrase. It's not really a dictionaryable. Like that word, it's not really a phrase you can look up in the dictionary and kind of go, well, this is exactly the definition. Uh, and so it's got a lot of nebulous components, so I'm just talking about for my purposes. When you hear me mention a Mary Sue, that's what I'm talking about. It's a character who can't, who affects the story in no way. They don't participate, they don't really involve themselves in the story except to be there and to be important. And, and that's basically it. Um, avoid it if possible. Your best way to avoid a Mary Sue is honestly just pay attention to your characters. Pay attention to what happens to them. Make sure every character has at least some kind of flaw or weakness to them. Uh, and make sure that weakness isn't something like goddamn kryptonite or green rocks that no one can fucking use unless they are especially knowledgeable. Because that's going to diminish people's ability to empathize with your character. 
the thing with Twilight is people don't really empathize with Bella as much as they want to be in Bella's position. They want the hot guys fighting over them. They're not empathizing and going, my God, isn't Bella suffering? They're going, my God, look at those hot guys. Uh, again, my two cents. Uh, but that's a lot of a lot of what that is. Uh, and that's pretty much that. Apparently this is going to be a much shorter video than normal, so yay. And yeah. Uh, again, if you have any questions or arguments or discussion points or want to tell me to go fuck off, you know, feel free. I don't really give a shit. Uh, you people on the internet, unless you can come to my house and punch me in the fucking dick, I don't really care. Um, but, I mean, no. Uh, still thinking about Blogspot, but I'm notoriously procrastinating about doing shit like that, so. I'm not really a huge fan of putting myself out on the internet, so. This is all new to me. Well, I mean, this is a year old, but you know what I mean, goddammit. Uh, and if you don't, you know, I don't care. On that note.